The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Welcome back to the commercial break. I am Brian Green. This is my beautiful co-host, Kristen Joy. Hodley. best to you, oh, Chrissy. That's sweet. Best to you, Giving Brian. Giving thanks and best to you out there in the podcast universe. How the hell are you? Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this, The Commercial Break. It's not for everyone, but fact, news, or fiction is guaranteed in 15 seconds or less for your money back. Go to the tcbpodcast.com website in order to collect your earnings. I was thinking about something. And I don't know if it's just like Brian's random brain always thinking in weird ways, which is like what the whole show is based off of, Uh, and you being able to follow that brain around. (laughs) Um, Well, I've had some practice over the past 15 years. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Chrissy's been through the gauntlet. (laughs) She's like, well, if I'm going to be friends with this guy, I guess I'm going to have to try and keep up with his idiosyncrasies. One of which includes not paying attention to anything yeah. for more than five seconds. It keeps things interesting. Keeps things interesting, for sure. <laughs> I finally found somewhere where this all makes sense. Right. <laughs> right here at the commercial break. Thanks for following along. The podcast universe. Uh, the podcast universe is out there, and they are speaking. And so I was thinking in the shower. I don't know why this came up. Maybe it's because I saw a commercial. Do you see the commercial for that thing called The Menu, the, the movie called The Menu? No. It's an, another one, like a restaurant movie, but it's a thriller, killer, you know, campy, whatever kind okay. of movie. Um, but that reminded me of some of the um, the, the Anthony Bourdain uh, documentary that I saw. Oh, yeah, that was good. Two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was. Saw it in a movie theater, like an art house movie theater down in Florida. There was absolutely nobody in the movie theater because of COVID. Oh, right. And so it was just Astrid and I. Uh, sitting there in the movie theater and the <laughs> taking thing, the chance taking the chance <laughs> well we kind of knew nobody was going to be down there so yeah. we went in wearing masks we came out without uh and so it reminded me of anthony bourdain and how i how many great chefs i have worked with throughout the through my years in the restaurant industry oh yeah and how <laughs> i'm starting to realize that these artists these these chefs were just artists like mad creators Every single one of them, every single one of them was fucking bananas. They oh, yeah. all had a screw loose. Of they all course. had 10 screws loose. <laughs> they were all drug addled or, dr- or drunk at some point or <laughs> right. another, right? This is just my experience in the restaurant business, and I worked for a long time in the restaurant business. But they were all artists. There was this guy, Eric, that I used to work with. He, I worked with him at the, at the fine dining, one of the fine dining right, restaurants, fine dining steakhouse, days. right? And this guy was a total shit show. I mean, he <laughs> looked like a shit show. Every time he walked in, he was high, he was drunk. I don't know what he was. He was everything Hair at one time. Hair going everywhere. Hair was like, going everywhere. Yes. Kind of smelled a little funky. <laughs> Had his glasses were always dirty. Like for me, I wear glasses because I like to wear glasses. And I can't stand not one smudge no. on my glasses. I have a whole machine that cleans my glasses in the back of my yes. house, right? But for him, he would like dip his glasses in, in fryer grease and it'd be okay. He'd still be looking through them. And it just bothered, it drove me fucking crazy. Well, he was crazy. blurry-eyed anyways, so yeah. might as well. <laughs> so before, he, before the shift started and then certainly after the shift started, the guy would be drinking Jack Daniels from the moment he walked into the restaurant. <laughs> it was kind of like... This is just what we need to get him through. Yeah. It's, it's almost, it was just like a musician, just like an artist. Like, that'll keep you going for the, the shift. The juice is yeah. flowing. Yeah. <laughs> Come on and take a sniff. <laughs> like, he just, he just was there. Yeah. It was almost like everyone in the restaurant agreed that we were going to not notice the fact that this guy was so fucked just up. Just ignore it. Yeah. Because he cooked food that got people laid. That's the reason why. <laughs> I mean, the guy could fucking cook. And he cooked so deliciously oh. everything that he put together on that menu was fucking delicious he had a way with it he didn't go by recipes he just had this brain that would just come up with shit and it would taste good inevitably i don't think i ever tasted one bad thing that eric made ever that's this, amazing i yeah, love good food but just like some uh, these divas and prima donnas out there in the you know the, the record industry and musicians you hear these like nightmare stories about only green m&ms right sure or you know we need a live shark in the green room right, so we could wacky fuck it. Requests. Yeah. wacky requests <laughs> eric was just like that he'd like have all these wacky requests of everybody i mean he literally would send his sous chef off in the middle of the shift and for 
about a year. I could not figure out why we'd have a busy Friday night and the sous chef would be gone for about an yeah, hour. That's the main part of the kitchen. The main part of the kitchen was his cocaine supplier, I think, <laughs> right. what was going on. Actually. He was going to make a run? Yeah, it took me a while to figure it out. But then I got to know the guy and I also asked the sous chef to leave. <laughs> I said, hey, while you're gone. Let me put in I an mean, order. if you're on your way, let me put in an order. I'll never forget the one this one night. Eric is, it's it's like a busy Saturday night, probably holiday season, because I just remember it being really busy, and Eric was on edge. Things were kind of going sideways. You knew the shift was going down. Wait time, you know, food was coming out very late. Ooh. People were sending stuff back. It was just kind of, it was an off night for everybody. 86, for the, the mac and cheese. 86, the mac and cheese. 86, <laughs> everything. 86, <laughs> Eric. Right. He's, he doesn't have his cocaine right now, right? And everybody's there. And the guy who was working the salad station was kind of jamming things up a little bit. He had appetizers and salads and desserts or whatever he was doing. And I will never forget standing at that window, this open kitchen that you could see from the entire restaurant, and Eric starts yelling, as he did sometimes. He starts yelling, you know, and he's yelling in Spanish. Rapido, rapido, rapido. And the the salad chef was like, I'm in English. I'm going as fast as I can. And Eric picked up a pork chop, a raw pork chop, and he threw it at the Whoa. salad guy and hit him in the head. And I mean, it was like the whole restaurant stopped. Right. Because he was yelling, so he had already called attention called to attention, himself. Yeah. And then he took a raw pork chop and he threw it at this guy's head and it landed. It like hit him right in the face and oh, landed. Did that guy quit? Without a beat. <laughs> yeah, Every, about to say. And all of the amigos, all of the amigos. All of my brothers and sisters, probably most of them from Mexico, who I just learned to love that culture through the restaurant business, right? Yeah. And they call me Pelones, which is like dumb bald guy. But, (laughs) uh, you know, for years, I didn't care. (laughs) It's like, whatever. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's me. (laughs) Without it, it's like everything stopped for a second. Everyone just stopped, looked at the, the salad chef. And the salad chef goes, <laughs> the salad chef takes one of the plates and puts it on the, like, the area where you pick up the plates. Yeah. And he goes, I need a runner, table 23. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody started laughing. Even Eric. Eric even thought it was funny. The whole thing was just funny to everybody. Oh, my God. And uh, it just, I don't know why this came to my head, but it, I think really. Did uh, Astrid throw a pork chop at you? Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Astrid wants to throw it. She hates me. And I'll. No, oh, she does not. No, I know she loves me, but she hates. She loves me, but she's irritated by almost everything that okay. I do because it, for her, it seems to have no rhyme or reason. She's just like the other. What she's really disliking right now is the fact that I'm on some diet, right? Right. And that means she's got to cook 16 meals. She's got to cook a meal for me, a meal for her, a meal for Mia, and a meal for Matty because none of us eat the same thing. Right. And it's, everyone's all fussy about what they're eating right now. <laughs> and she's fucking so pregnant. And I'm like, let me cook it. Let me just do it. I'll do it, right? Let me get it. But she won't let me because she knows that inevitably I'm going to burn something or fry something or it's not going to taste good. It's just <laughs> it's just bad. My My... After all the years of working in the restaurant business. You picked up nothing. I picked up nothing. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Salt and pepper. Mise en place. <laughs> That's it. That's all Parmesan I picked up. Parmesan grating. Yeah. So every time. And Astrid is, the, Astrid is the kind of person. She'll be like, what do you want for dinner on Saturday? And it's like Monday afternoon. And I'm like, how in the fuck am I supposed to know what I want for dinner well, on meal, Saturday? She's meal planning. She's meal planning. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she's like, I hate you because you never know what you want to eat ahead of time. And I always have been the kind of guy who's like, when the fancy strikes me, I'll eat kind of whatever, right. whatever's going on. You are on. like that. Yeah. But, and I think I might have learned that in part from the restaurant industry. And you know why? It's because when you're working a long day at the restaurant industry, you eat whatever is put in front of you. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's how it works. You don't think about what you're going to have ahead of time unless you have a break and you can order something. You don't think what you're going to have ahead of time. Somebody puts a plate of food in front of you and you just eat it. If you're hungry, you just eat it. That's what happens. And and that's I and I spent 10 years doing that. And now that. you have choices. Now I have choices. And one of those choices is irritating Astrid. Right. <laughs> I just said I'm going to irritate Astrid. But fear not. She's going to have her come up. She also hates this voice that I'm doing for her. She's like, you make me sound so stupid. <laughs> I'm like, I don't make you sound stupid. I make you sound like you're going to win in the end. <laughs> I see you later. Bye, Brian. Oh, this is a, me and Chrissy here at the, the old people's home. Oh, oh, hoping you could come by and visit. Oh, I'm going to come by and visit so you can sign the check. <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. Can you bring the kids? I cannot bring the children. Unfortunately, they are in Paris at yeah, private in cooking school. <laughs> <laughs> they have a new father now. It's the pool boy. <laughs> it's just more convenient for everybody. Right. Yeah, this puts in better. <laughs> okay, well, I love you. I once loved you too. <laughs> Sorry, honey, the hot wants what the hot wants. <laughs> is what it is. That is what it is. The heart wants what the heart wants. Yeah, so when I was thinking about Anthony Bourdain, I was thinking what a what a mad genius kind of this he guy was. was. He got famous His writing. books were really good, too. Oh, man, they're so good and, and so spot on, too. Like the yeah. naked truth about the restaurant industry is it is a home for broken toys. In a lot of different ways. And I include myself in that. It's your, it becomes your family. You spend more time with them than you do with anybody else. The restaurant business, the customer service business is tough. And that's why it fucking pisses me it's off. It's stressful. It's stressful. It's mm-hmm. very stressful. People get upset when they have to eat. Like people get really upset around eating time. And if it's not exactly the way they want it, some people are just that's assholes. That's I am always nice to the, always. the wait staff. Always. Everybody in a restaurant I'm, I'm extremely nice to. You know what the number one The number one reason I have not continued to date people throughout my life is disrespect to service staff or not tipping service staff correctly. Yeah, it tells you something about It tells me everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. Yep. They have not suffered in their life. They do not know what it's like to serve somebody else. They have no idea what empathy is. People have bad days. Waiters have bad days. You have the shitty, really fucking shitty experience at a restaurant. It likely wasn't caused by your server, but if it was caused by your server, 15%. Yeah. Right, but in my opinion, twenty percent is kind of yeah, the baseline. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like standard. the baseline. That's just the standard yeah. that you give and then somebody. You go over if they go. That's over. right. Well, what about the Europeans? <laughs> well, the Europeans chose to do it a different way. It's yeah, a profession they pay more over there. Per hour, they it's a profession. Yes, yet you get paid a salary. That's mm-hmm. the way it works. You work a certain amount of days, just like you would any other job here in the United States, like an exact you know uh, office job here in the United States. You get paid a salary. You have benefits that go along with that. And, 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 therefore, you do not have to tip. And some people take real offense to that. I was telling the story the other day that uh, when Astrid and I... I still tip every I time. I still tip every time, too. I know. I it tried to so tip weird once at a to. French restaurant, and the guy got upset. And so I just left it alone. But I was kind of like arguing with the guy. I'm like, no, I want to leave you a tip. And he's like, no, we don't accept tips. That's not what happens here. Like, it's okay. And I go, I know it's okay, but let me give you a few extra. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, no, you're honestly, you're insulting me at this point. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right, I got it. Yeah, but the service industry is, I, I think these, these people, they're artists and they're... Uh, creative types and they're empathetic and they're... It's a craft. Uh, yeah, it's a craft and yeah. it, it takes a lot. And why I brought this... Why I, I think why this initially... I Like my, my brain went down this road is because I watched a YouTube video from a waitress who had said that um, she worked in the restaurant business for a long time and at a nice restaurant and she really felt this sense of unease around the fact that she was a good looking girl. It mm-hmm. felt this unease around the fact that when she approached a table, she f- w- full of guys or with guys at it, you know, single guys, that she felt like part of the way that she would be able to improve her income was by uh, accepting flirtation. Flirtation, yeah, yeah. Accepting flirtation, not necessarily giving mm-hmm. it back. And she was talking about one specific customer who kept on nagging her, and, like recently, nagging her and nagging her and nagging her and flirting with her and flirting with her and she just wasn't into it. Like she was just like, he's not my, this is, I'm not doing this. Yeah. I'm not doing it to this extreme. Right, I'm like not a, interested. Yeah, like a high hello and give you a nice smile, okay, but yeah. you know, this guy was really hitting on her and he asked for her phone number at the end. Hey, give me your phone number and we'll hook up afterwards. And she said, I'm sorry, That's I'm not here to get phone numbers. I'm here to work. This is my lifestyle. And he gave her a zero tip <gasps> and complained to the management that oh she was rude to him. God. And this girl was like really upset. This lady what was like dick. really upset yeah. about this. And I completely empathize with her situation. It's like there's... These people that serve us, from the mad chefs who do these fantastic creations, and I and I realize that there are plenty of pe- chefs in the world who probably don't cook well, but you know these mad chefs who feed us three times a day, and the service staff that brings it to us and gets our pepper and our sauces, and you know mm-hmm. f- refills our water and all this, they're doing us a service, like they're choosing to serve on us. It's a really noble fucking profession, and 
if you think the girl who's serving you is hot, you, you can try. There's nothing stopping you from trying yeah, as long as you're respectful. Not leave a tip. Yeah, but don't not leave a tip. Don't base the fact that you're you're going to take away something that she needs to have a living. She spent hours with you or an hour with you. Right. So then you can give her a zero because your fucking dick is small and you don't get laid. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just an asinine reasoning. And when I go out with friends that don't tip and when I go out with people who don't tip, it really drives me fucking crazy. And until the United States the st- starts doing it like they do in Europe, which I know some restaurants do now, but until they start doing it like that, that's how it goes. Yeah, because you get paid like two dollars an hour, two fifteen an hour, yeah, two fucking fifteen an hour. Yeah, it's very minimal. I think we need to start recognizing the people who work in a re- in the restaurant for what they are people who cannot currently get into rehab and are just trying to make a living. That's it. it. (laughs) Let's get it together, kids. One step away from rehab. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I swear to God. You know those, like, those, like, rehab brokers, those people who go out and, you know, on the street and they find people, then they put them in rehabs and the rehab will give them $300 or whatever it is. I always thought to my, when I learned that this was an actual profession, this is an actual profession. I had no idea. There's a whole television show on Vice about it. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's ex, it's like ex addicts who, through their connection of other addicts or just being on the street or whatever, they will get paid by a facility. sober living facility to bring people in the door. Well, this place them. costs money. That's for sure. Oh man, they do. But insurance takes care of a lot of this, right? So if it's, you have, it, if you have it, yeah. Um, and then there are all kind of like programs that will subsidize and all this yeah. other stuff. There's you know charities and, and that will do this. But there are people whose actual job it is is to go out and place people into sober I living did facilities, not know that. and they get paid for it. Now. I think that there's probably some people who are acting very honorably on this. I think that there are people that I have met. <laughs> hey, you look like you're <laughs> Hey, you look like a shithead. <laughs> you want to go to Rio? Do me a favor. Spend 24 <laughs> hours in this place. I'll split $300 with you. <laughs> have you ever done heroin? You want to start yeah. now? <laughs> I just need your piss to be dirty. Here, let me piss for you, and then you can go in. <laughs> I'm sure that some of these people do this very honorably, but I have met people who have turned this into like an online business, and there is nothing honorable about what they yeah. do. They are just shoving people into places they probably aren't going to get much help, and then they just make some money out of it. Yeah. Um, but I was always, th- I was when I learned this was a profession, I always thought to myself the restaurant industry would be a great place. <laughs> I don't think everybody in the restaurant industry is an addict, uh, but I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people that I worked with over the years in the restaurant world, uh, yeah, everybody partied, that's for sure. Oh, man, did they. (laughs) Speaking of misogyny, I was trolling on the internet. Well, as you do. As I do like to do. And I (laughs) happened upon the most random but interesting video that I have seen in a while. In the ni- early 1990s, everybody was trying to be Oprah sure. or Phil Donahue. <laughs> right. For those Sally of you who don't Jesse. know, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, yep. Jenny Jones. Uh, who was the other one? Ricky Lake. Ricky Lake was the other one. one. That's everybody right. Montel had, Williams yeah. had one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everybody had like this daytime talk show. They were all trying to fill that it seemed like insatiable need for Oprah type content, but most people now people just watch people have train wrecks on their social media. <laughs> that's right. Now it's you don't need somebody to you don't need the talk show. You, that's right. Yeah. You just need Instagram. That's, that's yeah. all. That's, that's that's what you need. You need Instagram. So there was like there were these couple of offshoot off brand type daytime talk shows that came up on some of the networks and then fledgling cable news networks that went along with them like NBC and MSNBC and all this other stuff. I found a very interesting video, What Men Are Really Thinking, by a talk show host that you'll probably have never heard of, (laughs) but I thought the video was interesting enough that we should review, Chrissy, and see how times have changed in the last 20, 30 years. Okay. 1992. Am I doing my math correct? One, carry the three. 72 years. (laughs) (laughs) Last century. (laughs) You know how my math works. (laughs) All right. So without further ado... Let's take a look to what, let's listen to what men really want. What do they really want? Well, drugs <laughs> and pussy. <laughs> Some of us. There's others that, you know, you get it, whatever. Get it. Well, real quick, before we get into this. Okay. Have you heard about this whole Tampax debacle? No. What Tampax uh, tweeted the following. You're in, you slide into her DMs, we slide into her. We are not the same. That's exactly what was written, and they tweeted it out. Oh. 
You slide into her DMs, or you're in her DMs. <laughs> we are, you're inside her DMs. I'm going to make sure I get this right. We are inside her DMs. Uh, no. You are inside her DMs. <laughs> we are inside her. We are not the same. Which is just like a totally fucking insane thing for such a huge was company. It, well, was it? Because everything that's going on with Elon Musk right now and all the verified and the this and that. And no, the other, this is a real this Tampax. Is real, this, this is, was coming yeah. from the company. Yeah, now they're having to backpedal and apologize and all this other stuff because everyone said, why? If, who wrote this? Yeah. <laughs> and this is certainly not a woman, someone with a vagina that actually has Tampax inside of her. Number one. Number two. Number three, you're like sexualizing a, yeah. a period for no reason. Like A major company like this probably shouldn't be sending out this type of tweet. And on this particular note, I do have to agree. This is yeah. it's kind of a little gross, a little over the edge, <laughs> don't you think? Definitely yeah. uh, edgy. And I can guarantee you. The person, the human being who wrote that had a dick and balls. I can guarantee it. Or maybe at least a dick. Maybe no balls. But maybe at least it was AI. Dick. Maybe it was AI. Maybe it was. <laughs> Frankie B. <laughs> I vote Frankie B. All right. Back to what men really want. Okay. A man says women say one thing but mean another. Another man teaches other men how to get women into bed. And finally, one man says men need to learn to listen to what women want. What men really think of women today we have we brought Up two next. totally unreasonable human beings and one reasonable human being <laughs> so i had never heard of this show before i actually watched this video and i don't know if you have, she looks that? like jenny jones doesn't she, does. she she looks exactly like jenny jones uh, yeah. but her name is faith, faith daniels. daniels sounds kind of familiar but i don't know ah, look at the hairstyle <laughs> By the way, this is the least excited audience in <laughs> television really history. Gather. They're like, uh, yeah. Okay. Who's Faith Daniels? I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who is she? She looks like Jenny Jones. It's part of a tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Half the people aren't even clapping. No. <laughs> it's just, where's the hype man? Well, I don't know if you noticed by the shots that we're taking, but this is an audience of all women today. We have invited them here for a reason, because we have three men with different points of view. These three men think they know what women think, and today we will find out. Meet Ross Jeffries. He says he got tired of being Mr. Nice Guy and being dumped by women, so he changed his ways, and he wrote a book for other men who feel the same <laughs> way. It is called... <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I got tired of <laughs> treating women like human beings. <laughs> so I changed my ways. I still get dumped a lot, but I feel better about myself every day. Hey, I wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book. I got rich. And now women love me. <laughs> Once you get a yacht, it just becomes real too easy. How to get the women you desire into bed. But he's the one who's been dumped. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, he's the one who's been dumped. He's had no success. By the way, if you look at Ross, he doesn't look like the kind of guy who's no. like, you know, he looks like catching a bunch of tail by know, walking into the bar. Not. Yeah, he's not that guy who just sits at the end of the bar and gets a phone number for no reason. Oh. This is Mel Fight. Mel says women say they want a sensitive guy, but the minute men get sensitive, women run the other way. That guy's hair uh, is incredible. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen, I've never seen a mullet, but then on the top, there's not much. I've never seen It's like a big real, comb over. It's a come over mullet. Yeah, I've never seen real woman's hair <laughs> on the back of a man, but not on the top of his head. Because that is a beautiful mane. It just belongs on a uh, someone that's, <laughs> that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't life. think I've ever seen that. Yeah. Man, the hairstyles in the 90s were just crazy, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And finally, Bruce Weinstein. Bruce says he is oh, pro-feminist. Oh. He's a, he's a best-looking guy. Bruce is a good-looking guy. Yeah. He's dressed really nicely for the ni early 90s. He's got some yeah. kind of daffodil <laughs> shirt on under there. But he's really uh, like a handsome gentleman. And the other two guys have a little bit left on the table to be desired. <laughs> right. That's not to say that they're ugly. That's somebody else's, you know, that's whoever's opinion to make. But that's to say that of the three up there, if I was going to sleep with one of them, I would sleep with uh, our guy here. Bachelor number three. Bachelor number three. A woman. He thinks men would be a lot better off if they only learned to listen to what women have to say. Yeah. And he's getting laid directly after the show. Yeah, <laughs> these two guys are going plethora of women there to choose of from. Of course, because he's got the right attitude. He does. Look at the ladies; they're all like, "Woohoo!" <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Well, Ross. 
Listen, Mel, I guess you already realize that uh, your positions are in the minority here. What a surprise. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay out of this for a minute or two, and I want everybody, I'm just going to fire off some questions, okay? Just so we get some answers. All right, and I and I may uh, I may leave some of those balls hanging up there for you ladies to slam dunk later on. <laughs> oh, I bet you're going to leave some balls up there for slam dunking later. <laughs> I hate when talk show hosts do this. I hate when they like they signal what they're going to do next. They like project it out there to the world. Like I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to stay out of it. I'm going to leave some balls in the air. I'm going to do some things. We're going to talk some shit over. Then we're going to go to commercial break, and then we'll be back. And when we get back, we'll have everybody. It's like. Guys, <laughs> just start the show. I don't do that. Do it like I do it. <laughs> Literally have no thoughts right. the second that you <laughs> totally open the show. The yeah. Be lucky that you even remember the 15 paragraph opening to the commercial break and just go from there. Yep. On. <laughs> but that's your prerogative. All right. It's- Ross, what do women really want? I don't care what they want. I only care what Boo. they respond to. See- Boo, Ross. <laughs> I don't care what they really want. want. <laughs> yes, you I'm just do. writing a book about it. Yeah, I wrote a book about it. <laughs> uh, this sounds like an early, it sounds like the latest of Frankie B's videos. Yeah. My focus is a little bit different from your other guests. There's what women say they want, there's what women think they want, and then there's what they actually respond to. I'm not an academic, I'm not a theoretician. <laughs> yeah, don't say that, Ross. <laughs> I have no qualifications. <laughs> zero qualifications. But I know. By the way, all these guys who write these books and do these videos, they have zero qualifications. No. Mystery has made it, the guy Mystery, he has made an entire science out of nonsense. The guy makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> That's what nonsense is. No sense. With an extra N. I'm interested in what works on the street when it's time to date and mate. And what when it's time to date and mate, date I'm re- and yeah. mate. When it's time to date and mate, <laughs> I'll use my hate to get in great. You know what I'm saying? I got rhymes. <laughs> and then actually respond to is not what they say they want. So what do they respond to? They really respond to a guy who's a challenge, a guy who's a question mark, a guy who keeps them guessing. You see, in the beginning, the less attractive you are physically, the more you have to rely on your attitude. And that's what I wrote my book for. I wrote <laughs> Less attractive, guys. <laughs> when it's time to date and mate, I usually <laughs> masturbate. That's what I say, Faith. <laughs> By the way, anybody told you you look like Jenny Jones? <laughs> my book for the average looking, even ugly guy who goes out there in the real world and tries to be a nice guy gets his head kicked in. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. You can be pleasant. You see, we've got to define our terms. By nice, I mean accommodating. When you accommodate, you get what the commode gets. You get the crapola. You have to learn how to say no to a woman. Whoa. I mean, really? Can we just get over this? Yeah. Can we just, I mean, I realize it's 1992, 30 years later, Ross might have totally different opinions. Ross is going to like be scrolling on YouTube one day and be like, ah, shit. This thing came up. Dug it up. (laughs) (laughs) It's got like 27,000 views in the last 10 years. And then Brian and Chrissy come and, you know, it's going to get an extra, I don't know, one or two views if our channel is any indication. Yeah. As I said, I'm going to let a lot of these things hang and uh, you can all take them on later. But so, so this, I guess, attitude is your word. This attitude that you now have is more appealing to women? The attitude is vastly more appealing. Basically, the attitude is, I make no just excuses no? for what I want. And Yeah, it's just to tell women no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Chrissy, you want to go out to dinner tonight? <laughs> no. No! <laughs> just say yes. Chrissy, you want to go it. out to dinner tonight? <laughs> yes. No! <laughs> Where do you want to go? <laughs> oh, maybe the Italian no! place. No! Oh. <laughs> I'm not accommodating you. I know it's so weird. I know you want me. <laughs> yeah. I know that animal. I know your pheromones are in high drive right now. You want a man like me, six foot three, a hundred and six pounds, sopping wet, with glasses, no previous sexual experience, and a black turtleneck. <laughs> no, <laughs> changing. Number two, I don't need you. You need me. Now, bear in mind, I don't verbalize it. Exactly. Now, you see, you see this response here. You should never verbalize the attitude. You show it in your behavior. Oh, he's starting to sound like Teresa Caputo, just making shit up as he goes along. So you should never verbalize it. I made mistake number one, verbalizing it. (laughs) Yeah, because how do you verbalize that to somebody? I'm not going to be accommodating to you. I don't care what you want. It's not a really great way to start off a date. Well, yeah, he was saying that... 
he doesn't need them. They need him. If you don't need them, then why did you go through the trouble to write a book? I mean, come on. Not like you got rich off that book. Can't tell me you sold one copy. We're going to do a little digging and find out how yeah, many copies are. of this have sold. What was the name of the book? I don't know. Now, let's look right so you're sitting here putting your... They just put it on the screen. Uh, how to... I don't know. Wait, now you see how to get the women this, you desire in bed. Exactly. Bad, now yeah. you see That's a you see this title response too. here. You should never <laughs> verbalize the attitude. You're you show it in your behavior. You're, so you're sitting here pointing your finger at him. Stand up and tell us why you're pointing at him. No, I was just saying that um, he's dick. just got this prejudgment <laughs> of what women are like, and I. <laughs> I just want to say you're an asshole. Am I allowed to say that? Isn't this on some like weird cable channel or something? <laughs> right. What's your name again? Jenny Jones? No, Faith Evans. Okay, sorry, Faith Evans. <laughs> Are you a famous country singer? I think what he should do is just develop his own self, and then he's going to find right. these relationships. The sleaze bag better. you see is the real me. I found the real me. Yeah. The the I, I think bag. I think you prejudged us. I mean, the the, the audience reaction at the time. No, of the she show. didn't prejudge no. you. You opened your fucking <laughs> yes. fat lips and you decided to say something incredibly insensitive and stupid. Incredibly insensitive and stupid. I don't care what women want. Yeah. Well, then live by yourself and do right. your own thing. Don't bother women with not accommodating them. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I know. That's like the opposite of what a relationship to, is. Who would even want to date this guy after he's said all of this stuff? Chrissy, there is someone fucking out there. You know there is. You know there is some uh, person out there, man or woman or whatever. If you... And, and I think part of what he's saying is not true... But I think that some of us at certain times in our lives are gluttons for punishment. Like we get into dramatic relationships where we're not being treated well. Mm -hmm. And while it may not be as forward as this guy is talking about, it becomes apparent pretty quickly. And then we do stupid stuff like say, the whole world with the whole world. <laughs> while we're filing for our fifth restraining right. order. Right? I mean, it's, it's, true. it's like so easy to get caught in this trap. It's the, what he's saying face forward usually comes a little bit later on down the line but all of us have been in a relationship where someone does not accommodating and treats us like shit and we stick around Keep for going dumb back. reasons yep. yeah couple, 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 couple. <laughs> oh show that the women here have prejudged us i think it's a sad comment on women he's that a men's rights kind of activist that's oh, a men's rights <laughs> activist because that's what we need more men's rights <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is in the 90s that's ballsy bro uh, <laughs> men's rights activists what exactly are you missing out on bro are you driving voting <laughs> i mean come on man are you getting paid more probably <laughs> the ross is encouraging that men do that's a sad comment on you well, listen you, uh, you should develop yourself you, you, and that's to be a, a you, right I, I, you know what i found i found that the nice guys who when i'm on the radio or tv nice guys call up and go well it wouldn't be myself it's the nice guy who's the phony who's not being yeah. his real self because he's afraid he can't do anything. So you're going oh, back to my point. Oh, my God. No, Jeez. he just happens to be a nice guy. <laughs> he just doesn't take the tack to not accommodate <laughs> anybody else in his life. This is just like... I'm playing games. Yeah, this is... You are playing fucking games. That's right. Now, tell me that... I have met very few people in my life, and I have met some, but I've met very few people in my life whose natural disposition is mean. Yeah, me too. And Chrissy is one of them. <laughs> That's why I'm calling for help. All right. <laughs> no. I, I've tried to stop the commercial break on several different occasions. And I've said no. Oh, <laughs> not accommodating. All men are jerks. No. No. And some no, no. hide it. No, no. Isn't that, I thought Faith wasn't getting involved. Yeah, Faith wasn't going to get involved. That lasted about three minutes. <laughs> She's but of course, now. Faith had a long career in daytime television. It lasted about three episodes. <laughs> right. so. What you just said is all no, men are sort of no. jerks and some of them try to sugarcoat. No, what I'm saying is, saying is that what you just said? No, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I said I was going to stay out of it and I can't. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that it. there's a massive power imbalance in favor of women when it comes to dating and sex. And women through their behavior, through showing men what they actually respond to. Oh my God. Yeah, what the bad. fuck is this guy talking about? It's bad. There is a power imbalance when it comes to <laughs> sex, and women have it. Wow! In the history <laughs> of humankind, humankind, 
I don't think the power balance, as far as sex is concerned, has been tilted in the female direction. No. And only your own life experiences give you that perception. If you've been a loser in love, bro, join the fucking club. We've all been dumped, bro. It just happens. It does. But that doesn't mean that, that women have the power balance as far as sex is concerned. What is that craziness? <laughs> it's hard to see through that bullshit. I'm sorry. It is. Force men to act in a certain way. Yes, That's there a- By the way, I consider myself a feminist, and um, I just want all the ladies to know out there that <laughs> I'm on your side. That's right, you are. <laughs> the power ba- there is a power imbalance in our society, but who wields the power? It is men who wield the power, and I'm here to say, in I'm, the here, today to room, say, not I'm the here today to say that it is time for men to give up our power and authority and our privilege because we have dominated women, we have Wait. dominated other men, we have dominated the planet for too long, and it has got to stop. That's right. Like oh, and by guy. the way, Bruce here, it's, who's speaking on behalf PhD, of the feminist, has a fucking doctorate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Joel on the other end just has a really big chin and a bad nose. Okay? I'm sorry that's what you were born with, Joel. But, dude, get over it. This is what women want. They want to hear this. Women want... What you want is you want to hear that we're jerks. You want to hear that we have all the power. You know, the, the, the most important unspoken truth about men... You said, we are very angry. Lay it on us. We use Pantene just like you do on our beautiful locks of hair. <laughs> My hair brought to you by Pantene. I've never seen a head of hair I've like this on a man. I've never either. I have not. This is unbelievable. He's got a bad comb over He's on top. Sally like a bald... Jesse Raphael's glasses. He does. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael's glasses, which are just horrible. Uh, goatee that's really hard to see because his hair is so wispy and thin. And then he's got this beautiful locks of hair that go all the way down to the middle of his back. <laughs> yeah, just in the back. Yeah, it's like a mullet, the, the but top is supercharged. A, yeah. a lot of us are very angry at women. And this is a good example. You're showing why we're angry. You're not even listening. You don't want to listen to what we have to say. Well, and I'm, I th- I'm afraid that they heard it. I don't, know, so I don't the, think they I heard it all. And I think, you know, the reason that men don't communicate about their anger we keep it secret is because when we try to tell you why we're angry you respond with ridicule with okay why are you angry or your own anger i'm not anger i'm satisfied because i know how to manipulate women and get what i want oh, oh there we go there yep. it is yep. you just said that nice guys are not being honest but you're being honest but then you use the word that you manipulate women which is not honest yeah <laughs> chrissy I just I can't tell you how bad this 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 advice is. I can't explain how bad this advice it's is. It's horrible. I'm going to try it. <laughs> Say his point is so preposterous. Ever get a shot of this audience. Every woman sitting here is sitting on more power than Con Edison pumps out in ten years. <laughs> You you control the access to sex, and that is an incredible amount of power. The man yes. asks the woman. Oh my God. Jesus. <laughs> it's not a there. Both people control access to sex. That's how yeah. it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. If you don't get a boner, thing. no one's fucking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, that's the way that it is. That's the way the universe made you. It takes two to tango. And only if one person is overpowering the other. And that's traditionally men. I'm sorry. Yeah. but Yeah. Says yes it's or no. She there. has the power. And that makes way. second. Feel, you don't know this, but it's the truth. A lot of men feel powerless and degraded and dehumanized by the sexual system whereby the man asks the and the woman The system. sexual system? <laughs> I want to get involved in that. Where's the sexual system? <laughs> it's a club after school. <laughs> Thank you for calling the sexual system. Please listen closely as our following menu options may have changed. Press 1 if you're angry at women. Press 2 if you feel like women are controlling your access to sex. Press 3 if you've got beautiful, lovely long locks on the back, but not much hair in the front. Press 3 if all apply. Boop. Please hold. John's sexual systems, how can I help you? Yes, I'm really angry at the sexual system. Yeah, join the club. I've been trying to change it for a while, but there's only so much I can do when all the women are sitting on their vaginas and not giving us access. <laughs> Listen, I can only give you one piece of advice. The more you hate women, the more you get laid. That's just the truth. It's just a known fact in the universe. So uh, call me back in a couple of years. We'll see how much progress we made on their sexual systems. <laughs> <laughs> sexual systems. We feel harassed every minute of every day of our lives, and it's about time that you understand that. When Mel, we look at wait, the- I'm sorry, one second, Bruce. Mel, stand up. <laughs> Turn around. 
Oh my God, he's wearing a skirt. Oh, it's a long skirt. What in the good fuck is going on here? I don't know. Is he (laughs) cross-dressing? I thought this was one show. Now, now doesn't that invite harassment? No, what it invites is hypocrisy. What it invites is, you know, you're... The, the fashion rage for women this year is a man's suit and tie. When you decide to ridicule me in my skirt, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding, Faith. I don't like the length, and I don't think it matches the sweater is my problem with it. <laughs> Good one, Faith. I do not at all get what's going on here, actually. I Why is he, where, is he trying I to make a point? he's trying to make a point. Or yeah. is he angry at women because he'd like to be one? Yes. Yes. That okay. might be it, too. Or he's identifying with one, and it's 1992, and this is not Repressed. It's not a common yeah. practice. Yeah. I said that when men, when men stand up for themselves, what do they expect from women? Ridicule. You proved it, didn't you? I you did. Proved, you I'm did. guilty right here. I admit it. I admit it. You have a question. Yes, my question is directed to um, him. What's your name again? Ross. Ross. Fuck you. I think yeah. you- <laughs> my question is this. <laughs> She looked like she was about to say yeah. that. How many fucks can I give you? <laughs> Jeez, this girl's no joke. No, she's bad. She said that Ross. She said Ross. Ross, I think you're going to end up... say it right. Ross. Ross. <laughs> I think you're going to end up a very lonely man. Yep. That's not a question, but good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you got to understand, he says quite the contrary. He says he has a much better dating life, romance life, sex yeah, life it's, now. It's incomparably better. Yeah. I mean, you know, l- let's look at reality. The reality is that, that nice guys, not only, don't, not only do nice guys finish last, they often don't even get into the race. And you want to talk about fashion. If a woman does like a nice guy, it's her way of making a fashion statement. It's fashionable for her. Right. And, and Ross is... Oh, my God, Ross. You're just miserable, dude. God damn, bro. You got to fucking hold space for that and shit. (laughs) You got to have a moment. Get in in the now, bro. You got to get in the flow. You know what you need? (laughs) You need a little asshole tanning. I feel like if you were doing some asshole tanning (laughs) or any tanning whatsoever, you might have a different outlook on life. (laughs) It's hard to be angry when you're tanning your ass. I'm telling you that right now, Chrissy. (laughs) Absolutely right. Women have a lot of sexual power, and he has the courage to say that. He's making a mistake, though. He's encouraging men to simply surrender to that power. And I think, you know, if you're a man and you follow Ross's advice, you're going to get more sex, but you're going to have less self-respect. There are, I don't agree there with are that. more important no. things in life. Right. Surrender to, to that, that power. power. Oh, my God. I'm really confused. Well, I think they're trying to have a nuanced conversation with something that's not extraordinarily nuanced. It's you are who you are. Right. As a human being. And you have this personality. And I have found and I've had this conversation a lot lately. I you can you can beat people into submission. You can do that. That's a thing you can do. And it works usually in the military in some organizations like corporate organizations. It works as an example. But when you get into a relationship where there's a lot of push and pull that's going on, you really have to be accommodating and if you're nice, if you use just a little bit of honey, you're going to collect more flies Absolutely. over time. Loyalty is created by a mutual admiration and respect and trust. It doesn't come from beating someone into submission. That's not how it works. That's, or playing games, manipulating. Yeah. yeah, That's right. That's not loyalty. That's domination. And there's a different thing there. There's certainly a place for that in the world in some way, shape, or form. But when it comes to relationships man woman man man they them whoever yeah, whatever you're into it should be a partnership and how do you create a partnership you create as an expert in partnerships how do you create <laughs> a, a good partnership you tell your wife in advance what you want to eat like plenty in advance like a week in advance you yes. tell her what you want and then you'll avoid all of these road bumps also i think ross is just really repressed like yeah. i or what, i think he probably has not been late in a good long time oh yeah, yeah. for sure let me get to the commercial break, and we'll come back and find out oh, why. Oh, she They're got right to us. us. Thanks very much. We <laughs> certainly appreciate it. That's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what. That might be a good place to end this particular episode, but more to come. We'll follow up on this because it just gets better, Chrissy. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Better as in worse? Worse. Okay. Much worse. <laughs> So look for that follow-up episode in the next couple of weeks. Guys, thank you so much for writing in, calling in, sending us your content suggestions, sending us your ideas. 
sending us your personal stories. We love it. I just had a huge interaction with one of our trucker ladies. Nice. We've got a lot of truckers that listen to us, and we've got a couple female truckers now that listen this. to us. And I actually think I, actually think I like the female truckers <laughs> better. <laughs> yeah. They're really funny. And they're uh, I bet and they're they so are. open and honest. Oh, and one of our female trucker friends has a. She's in a poly relationship that's actually been working for a very long oh. time. And she wrote me a whole story about it. And I'll share that on a future episode. Uh, because Chrissy and I's opinion about polyamorous is that polyamorous is just French for my relationship doesn't work. So, <laughs> so let me bring somebody else in. Yeah. But she claims her okay. poly relationship is working just fine. Good <clears> and for I her. said, even a broken clock is wrong. That's right. Most of the day. <laughs> that's right. Twice that's a right. day. That's right. <laughs> I said it that way on purpose. I'm just you that. All right. Well, I got to go think about what I'm having for dinner, dinner. Uh, July of next year. Exactly. So <laughs> Get your menu planned That's out. Right. TCBpodcast.com. Go there. Hit the contact us button. Comments, questions, concerns, or content ideas. All right there. Send them to us. You got a story. You need advice. Whatever it is, send it through the website or 855 TCB8383. That's 1 855 TCB8383. Anywhere in the world, toll free. We'll pick up the charges. You can send us a voicemail. You can send us a text message. Just do it at 855 TCB8383. And please, we beg of you, do us a favor. Go to youtube.com slash the commercial break. Hit the subscribe button. Watch some of the videos. If you have an episode that's a favorite of yours, go watch it. On the YouTube channel, I can guarantee yeah. you're going to get some extra <laughs> exactly. laughs out of it. Yeah, I guarantee it. If you don't, unsubscribe and I'll be okay with that. But just go give it a try. Subscribe, like, comment on your favorite videos. At the commercial break on Instagram, we posted there for the first time in years. Whoa. A couple of days ago. So I there did. you go. All right, Chrissy. Well, I guess that's all I can do I today. So. But I will say that I love you. I love you. And I will say best to you. Best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, we always say, we do say, we must say. Bye. Bye.